Good morning, everyone. Bill Gertov, thank you for joining us this morning and uh, being together for these Divrei Chizuk. Let's begin with a parak from Tehillim, Kuf Chaf Aleph, and I'll recite it. Everyone is uh, invited to join in with me. Shir Lamalos Esa Inai El Heharim Meayin Yavo Ezri Ezri Meim Adunai Ose Shemaim Ve'Aretz. Ayitain Lamod Aglecha Al Yanum Shamrecha Hine Lo Yanum Velo Yishan Shomer Yisrael Adunai Shamrecha Adunai Tzilcha Al Yad Yeminecha Yom Hamashemesh. Lo yakeka v'yareach v'alayla Adunai yishmarcha mikora Yishmor es nafshecha Adunai yishmor tzeischa uvoecha Me'ata v'ad olam And with that to Hillam we have our soldiers in mind We have those that are kidnapped Those that are in captivity Those that have been injured And uh, all of those that are going through very very difficult days um, we have we have those in mind as we recite those words of Tehillim and uh, we daven. So the question is, how do we uh, how do we respond as Jews in times of an eight sarah in terms of uh, difficult days and the difficult days that we are in? One of the ways classically that we respond is what we just did, and that is davening and that is praying, reciting words of Tehillim. There is another way as well, which is uh, some have pointed out in terms of today in particular, there are those that take on fasting. And uh, there is a tradition of uh, the day that proceeds or that goes into Rosh Chodesh, and tonight is Rosh Chodesh Kislev. So today is a day which is known as Yom Kippur Katan, that it's a day that we ask for atonement, which relates to the atonement, the kapara of the day of, of Rosh Chodesh. There are those that recite special tefillot. There are those that fast as well. And I saw Rav Herschel Shachter Shlita of Yeshiva University, and I saw through the rabbinate of Israel that there was a recommendation, being that there already is a custom, which most people don't observe, but there is a custom of fasting today to take on today as a fast day, as a uh, as a day that we that we use that fast intentionally for uh, as a prayer and asking God for rachamim and for kapara, for atonement. So there are many that are doing that today. So the idea of fasting is something that we do incorporate. It's one of the ways in which we respond to times of suffering. And there is another way as well that I want to highlight, and that's going to be the topic of my my divrei chizuk this morning. One of the ways that we respond to eight sarah, to difficult days, is with Torah learning, with limud Torah, that is very much a part of what we've done in these uh, chizuk sessions together over the last number of weeks to learn Torah together, and specifically learning Torah with uh, with the soldiers in mind, with uh, with the difficulties that we are facing, and asking God for rachamim. There is a source in the Gemara, and this is found in Megillah, the very beginning of Megillah, Dav Gimel, where it talks about Yoshua who is going to war, as we know, Yoshua conquering the land of Israel. And one evening, an angel appears to Yoshua and says to Yoshua that although you are engaged in war, you also need to be learning Torah. That, ter- that Torah learning itself also brings safety to Am Yisrael. And that is one of the important sources that we have in terms of the connection, the importance of Torah learning, how Torah learning can act as a safeguard, bringing safety to, uh, to Am Yisrael. And uh, so our Torah learning during these days is very important. And uh, the Torah le- learning that we're doing right now has that added dimension, not only the Torah learning in terms of the Torah Lishma and the learning that we're doing, but the, the Torah itself, we pray, should be, a, uh, should, be, should be a safeguard to Am Yisrael at this time. But that is kind of like the spiritual, a spiritual component, a more mystical component, how Torah brings a certain amount of safety to Am Yisrael. But I want to talk about and highlight another aspect of Torah learning and why it's so important during this time. And really based on a uh, on a teaching of Rabbi Salavechik, Yosef Dov HaLevi Salavechik, Zecher Tzadik Livracha, where he talks about a particular component of Torah learning, which I think is very significant for us. And one of the aspects of Torah learning that we don't always have in mind, because we think about Torah learning in terms of an intellectual pursuit, 
in terms of the wisdom that we attain through Torah learning. But there's another aspect of Torah learning, and that is the relationship that we have with Hashem, that we forge a deeper relationship, a closer relationship with Hashem when we learn. And here I want to highlight a halacha that's found in the Rambam. And we know that the Salavechik, the briskers, always turn to the Rambam in terms of, of sourcing their ideas. And this is found in Paragimel, halacha yud gimel of the Rambam. And he writes something which is um, a bit out of the ordinary in terms of the best time to learn. Here we are, we're gathering right now in the morning, 10.30, 10.35 in Yerushalayim, as a beautiful time to learn Torah. But the Rambam writes there's another time that's even more significant for Torah learning. And this is what he writes. Afalpisha mitzvah lil mod biyom of Alila, even though it's a mitzvah to learn day and night, ain adam lamed rov chachmato el balila. That the nighttime learning is when one learns and one is able to attain the greatest amount of Torah knowledge. Lefichach misha rata lizakot becheter a Torah. If a person wants to merit the crown of Torah, yiz zaher bechol leilotav. That person should be aware, should be careful with the way that they're spending the nighttime hours. The nighttime hours have uh, provide an opportunity, many, many hours at night, to be able to learn Torah. And it's possible to lose out, not to take advantage of that. And that's what the Rambam writes. Lo yabed, you shouldn't lose. Afilu echad mehen b'shena, just sleeping off the night, going to bed early. Vachila ushtia, just drinking and eating, besicha, or just just conversing, ukiyotse bahen, ella betalmet Torah, how important it is to learn Torah at night, vidivrei chachamam. But here the Rambam adds the following, amru chachamim, ein rina shel Torah, ella balayla. And the rina, the joy of Torah, the song of Torah, is only found at night. Shinemar, kumi roni balayla. That's the Rambam. Interesting. This is in Hilchos Rambam, so he codifies, the Rambam codifies the law, that there is something unique about the learning at night. And here Rabbi Salvechi points out that it's very, very, very um, startling, the Pasuk that the Rambam chooses. And it's a Pasuk that's found in Eicha. And the Pasuk in Eicha says, Kumi Roni Balayla. Now the question is how to translate the word Roni. We're familiar with the word Roni as Rina, as song, but Roni or Rina also has another connotation, almost an opposite connotation, which means to cry or to cry out. So one of the ways of interpreting this Pasuk and what the Rambam is referring to is that nighttime learning is also a time to sing to God. It's also a time to cry out to God, which means that the Torah learning is not just an academic or an intellectual endeavor, but through that learning at night. And what's so special about learning at night is the relationship that we forge with Hashem at night. There's something about the nighttime hours. There's something about sitting under the moon and the stars, the relationship, the closeness, maybe during the nighttime that we feel a bit more vulnerable and that we're turning to Hashem even through that learning of Torah and ideally through that learning of Torah that one feels the embrace of Hashem, the closeness of the Shekhinah. Interesting, that Pasuk that the Rambam quotes, the second half of the Pasuk is something, a, a part of the Pasuk that many of us are familiar with. Again, he quoted from Eicha, it's Paragbet, Pasuk Yutet, and I read the Pasuk, Kumi Roni Balayla, that's what the Rambam quotes. And the end of the Pasuk, that same Pasuk is, Shifchi Kamayim Libech Nochach Pnei Hashem, that I pour out my heart, that I pour out my insides tor- t- towards Hashem which you see in this Pasuk, the Pasuk sounds like really davening, it sounds like tefillah, and yet the Rambam is speaking about in the context of learning. And we see that there's an aspect of learning that Rabbi Soloveitchik points out so beautifully that when we sit and learn Torah, that not only is it an academic pursuit, not only is it about knowledge, is it about wisdom, about learning facts, about learning halacha, but it's also, to use the wording of Rabbi Soloveitchik, it is a rendezvous with Hashem that we feel a closeness with Hashem as we're learning Torah. And he quotes a, another source in the Rambam, and this is something that we're familiar with, I think mostly from Pirkei Avos, where the Rambam writes, and this is in Halacha, this is a parag Aleph, Halacha Chet, Chayav Likvoa Lozman L'Talmud Torah, that a person should be Koveya Zman, that a person should, should set time, a particular time for Torah learning. 
And the way that generally that's understood is that, yes, we need to have set times in our schedule, and that's how we're going to inv- advance in terms of our learning, that we're going to every single day, Dav Yomi, Mishnah Yomi, whatever it is, that we're learning on a regular basis, and that's how we that's how we, uh, that's how we ascend in terms of our learning. Rabbi Soloveitchik said there's another aspect to, to being Kovea Zman. To be Kovea Zman is to make a date. And we make a date in our calendar when we're, when we're looking forward to meeting somebody. We're looking forward to getting together with somebody that we have a particular time that we do that. We make that time. We set that time. And there we are getting together with that individual. And Rosh Halvejik said this halacha of chayav the gvoalozman, that we have to make a set time, also intimates, it also alludes to the idea that we're making a set time with a Kaddish Baruch Hu, that we're getting together on a regular basis with the Holy One, with the Almighty, and we sit together learning His words, learning His Torah, and with that we forge a closer connection with Hashem. Rosh Halvejik quotes another Gemara, this is found in Chagiga, and uh, Daf Tesam obeys, and it says the following. The Gemara says, and also a well-known statement in the Gemara, it says that you cannot compare a person that studies Torah a hundred times, who reviews it a hundred times, to reviewing it a hundred and one times. That's the statement in the Gemara. There's nothing, no comparison. So Rabbi Salvation said, well, what do you mean there's no comparison? I mean, if you reviewed something a hundred times, you know it quite well. You've gone over it, over and over and over again. And what does it mean that hundred and first time? And I want to just, I'll share with you just a, a quote from, from Rabbi Soloveitchik, the way that he understands his Gemara. He says, the Talmud here is referring to a different facet of Torah learning. The student refuses to depart from his learning even after he repeated the chapter 100 times. They feel that studying Torah is a rendezvous with the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence. Therefore, they constantly seek to prolong the experience. They just cannot bring themselves to close the text. So here, Rabbi Soloveitchik interprets this Gemara a little bit differently. Generally, it's understood that you know, the more you go over, the more insight you're going to have. He says, no, at some point, there's, there may not be any more insight. But the fact that you don't want to leave that piece of Gemara, that you don't want to leave learning Chumash, you don't want to leave your Torah learning, it means that you are drawn to, that you feel attached to that Torah, that you feel attached to Hashem, that you feel the closest to Hashem. And the truth is, this idea, maybe, maybe, perhaps we can source this in the Torah itself in the way that the Torah speaks about Torah learning and the Torah itself and it's the well-known pasuk that, that is the pasuk that describes the mitzvah of learning Torah or writing a Sefer Torah. Kitvu lachem et hashira hazot. It's a pasuk that we're familiar with. And look at how the Torah speaks of the Torah. You are to write the shira, you are to write this song. Interesting. The Torah speaks about the Torah, speaking about, speaking about the words of Torah as a song to Hashem. And a song is something that is loving. A song is something that brings us closer. A song is something that relates to the emotion. That's not the intellect when we talk about the song. So the Torah itself, when it speaks about the mitzvah of of writing a Sefer Torah and learning Torah, it refers to it in the context of shira, of song, something that brings us closer to Hashem. The Rosh Soloveitchik and the world of Brisk was very much influenced by Rav Chaim Velazhin, who was the great student at the Vilna Gon. And Rechaim Velazhin writes a classic work about Torah learning, and it's studied in the yeshiva world, in the Lithuanian yeshiva world, uh, the Nefesh HaChaim. And um, there he speaks about the importance of the mitzvah of learning Torah, how we learn Torah, the effect that Torah learning has on the world, and uh, very much the theme that, uh, that I opened with this morning in terms of the effect, the impact, the influence, the, the, the spiritual impact that Torah learning has on everything around us. But here the Nebuchadnezzar Chaim writes something about the intimacy that one is to feel with Hashem when one studies Torah. And I think this may be one of the one of the sources that Rabbi Salvegi draws from as he's highlighting this idea of Torah learning being experiential, of feeling the presence of Hashem when we study Torah as well. And I want to just quote to you, this is from Perek Zion, Nefesh HaChaim, two lines from the Nefesh HaChaim. This is from Shar Dalit, from the fourth, uh, the fourth gate, the fourth chapter, Perek Zion. 
and he writes the following, Kodem He says, right before you begin to engage in the study of Torah, you should take a moment before you begin learning, to think for a moment, to think about that you are in the presence of Hashem, you should feel a purity of heart, you should feel, feel an awe of Hashem. But he recommends, and I don't think most of us do this, I don't do this, um, that we take a moment before we open the Gemara, before we open the Chumash, before we begin learning, just to take a moment, to take a few seconds, and to be cognizant, to recognize that we are about to learn the Torah of Hashem. We're about to sit in the presence of Hashem as we are learning. And one more one more line from the Nevesh uh and he says, and he says, also within the learning, as one is learning, you sit, you're learning for a half hour, learning for 40 minutes, learning for an hour. As you're learning, in the middle of learning, it's appropriate. And one can do the following, just to take a moment, stop what you're learning, just for, for a few seconds. Terem yirato that you should be aware that you are in the presence of Hashem. That same feeling that you had going into your learning of Torah, that you should think for a moment and renew that thought, the Yirat Hashem, that you have awe of Hashem, that you, that, you are in, that you are in the presence of Hashem as you are learning. Very, very interesting. Um, this is the great teacher of Lithuanian learning. I'm not sure if this is done in the yeshiva world, um, but it's something that he recommends in the in the Nevesh HaChaim. But clearly we see from Rechaim Belaz, and clearly we see from, from Rabbi Soloveitchik, that tradition, the importance of the experiential component of, of Torah learning. And what is that experience? The experience of, of feeling God's presence, to feel that the Shekhinah is with us, to feel that we are that we are close to Hashem. And let me let me close the learning with the following: the idea of feeling the shechina is something that uh, that we find that we find that the Mishnah speaks about as well. This idea is not not a new not a new idea, but very much rooted in the Mishnah, what we would call an often a Mishnah. That it's it's an open Mishnah. It says it very clearly. It's in Pirkei Avos, Perek Gimel, and uh, the third the third Mishnah in Perek Gimel, Gimel Gimel, Shnayim Sheyoshvin. Two people that are sitting, the Yesh Benehem Torah, and they are sitting together and they are learning Torah with one another. Shechina Shruya Benehem. The Shechina is there. The Shechina is palpable. It's interesting in this context, and again, you have many sources that talk about it, but in this context that I'm uh, that I'm quoting, it speaks about two people that are learning Torah with one another, and that that's a beautiful way of learning as well, and especially during during these days, not only to sit ourselves and open open a, a safer, open open learning, Torah learning, but to learn with others. And here the mission is highlighting that idea that when two people are learning together, when they're sharing with one another, maybe they're arguing a bit with one another, the different ideas, but having respect in that argument, that the Shekhinah is present and that we can feel the Shekhinah present in, uh, in that setting. I want to close with the following story, and this comes from one of the great Hasidic masters, Rav Neftali of Ravshitz, the Rebbe, the, the Ravshitz Rebbe. And he tells a story of his childhood when he was a little boy, when he was learning how, just beginning how to learn to read the Chumash. And one of the things that his Rebbe pointed out is when you see two Yuds that are next to one another, Yud Yud, that that's the name of Hashem. That's one of the ways that the name of Hashem appears in the text. So the next day when the uh, little Naftali, when he came in and he read the Chumash, when he was reading the Psukim, he read the Pasuk. At the, at the very end of the Pasuk, he would say Hashem. And the next Pasuk, he'd read the Pasuk and he would say Hashem. And the Rebbe said, what are you doing? Why are you saying Hashem at the end of the Pasuk? Well, he said, I see that there are two Yuds, two little dots at the end of every Pasuk, and that's the name of Hashem. A lot of, a lot of Chumashim have that. That's the way, as opposed to just a period at the end, that there are two, two periods or, or two dots at the end to end the Pasuk. So the Rebbe turned to Rav Naftali. Well, he wasn't Rav Naftali, but just Naftali, a little boy at that time. And he said to him, no, that's not the name of Hashem. 
And he said the following. He said that when you have two yuds that are on top of one another, on top of one another, that's not the name of Hashem. It's only when there are two yuds next to one another. And a yud is like the word yid. And a yid means Jews. And when Jews are sitting next to one another, when they're shevet achim beyachad, when they're together with one another, then you have the shechina. Yes, Hashem is there. But when the yuds, if it's one on top of the other, if one is kind of sees himself higher than the next, then the shechina, God's presence, is not interested in being there. Hashem shechina is not there. So part of Torah learning, one of the most beautiful aspects of Torah learning is to feel the Shechina, is to feel Hashem's presence when we are learning together. Uh, that should be a great source of chizuk to us as we are learning during this time, as we take time during our day. And uh, I heard Rav Asher Weiss, one of the uh, great Gedolei Torah of our generation, he said that if the soldiers are sacrificing, if they are putting in more time as they all are, and putting in great energy at this time. So we need to do the same on our front in terms of our Torah learning, to add to our learning, to add add a few minutes, maybe even a half hour or an hour to our Torah learning during these days. And our Torah learning should be a source of uh, bringing security to, to our nation in a spiritual sense, but also to each of us who are studying Torah, that it should be a source of chizuk, that we feel Hashem's presence, that we feel the closeness of Hashem. And uh, I want to wish everyone, we'll conclude with the Achenu, but I'll wish everyone a, a Chodesh Tov. We're just uh, just hours away here in Yushalayim to Rosh Chodesh Kislev. And when we think about Rosh Chodesh Kislev, it's a time uh, a time of joy. I don't know if anyone has seen the Sufganiyot rolling out yet. Usually by this time, they're already out in the bakeries. But uh, we can look forward to, please God, a month of uh, the month that celebrates Hanukkah. And a time, please God, of miracles and wonders of Nisim v'Niflot for Am Yisrael. A time that we're going to, going to be lighting the menorah, that we should see greater light in the world, greater light for Am Yisrael and for all mankind uh, in the coming days as we celebrate, please God, this evening, Rosh Chodesh Kislev. Let's conclude with the uh, with Yachenu together as we pray for our brethren, for our soldiers, for those in captivity, those that are healing. Achenu kol beit Yisrael hanitunim betzara v'shivya haomdin bein bayam uvein bayabasha makom yirachem alehem v'yotziyem mitzara lirvacha u'me'afela laora mishibu ligula hashta bagalav isban kariv Hashem should bring them from darkness to light and bring a great salvation quickly in our day and we say Amen. Wish everyone a uh, a good day and um, and a chodesh tov. Please, God, a month of of goodness and blessing. Call to everyone.